In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to the online service from the Parish Church of Rushmere St. Andrew for this Holy Eucharist. It's good to greet you in this virtual space as we join together to give thanks for all that Jesus has done for us. Our opening hymn is a joy to sing. It may be new to you, it was to me. Chris, our reader who opened scripture for us this morning, has requested it. The hymn says, my delight is to know you, Lord. Let's sing it. Holy name, 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. As we prepare to celebrate the mystery of God's love, revealed in word and sacrament, we take a moment of silence to call to mind our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Sunday before Lent. Almighty God, 
you have created the heavens and the earth and made us in your own image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works and your likeness in all your children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit reign supreme over all things, now and forever. Wow. Amen. Does not wisdom call and does not understanding raise her voice? By me kings reign and rulers decree what is just. By me rulers rule and nobles all who govern rightly. I love those who love me and those who seek me diligently find me. Riches and honour are with me, enduring wealth and prosperity. My fruit is better than gold, even fine gold, and my yield than choice silver. I walk in the way of righteousness, along the paths of justice, endowing with wealth those who love me, and filling their treasuries. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of long ago. Ages ago I was set up, at the first before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills I was brought forth. When he had not yet made earth and fields, or the world's first bits of soil. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep. When he made firm the skies above. When he established the fountains of the deep. When he assigned to the sea its limit, so that the waters might not transgress his command. When he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master worker, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and delighting in the human race.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light, that was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Some words from our lesson from Proverbs. Then I was beside him like a master worker, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting in the human race. That word delight, what delights you? Well, one of the greatest pleasures we experience is that of meeting a child or a grandchild after an absence and giving them a big hug. And during this lockdown, we've all been saddened because we've been prevented from meeting our families and friends and even holding those closest to us at arm's length. My grandson comes rushing to the front door when we ring and stand back, and he has to stop himself from coming out for the hug. With our children and grandchildren, we know them fully, and they know us, and that sense of love and trust is taken for granted, hence the delight at meeting up. But when we start a new relationship or friendship, We begin by sharing something of ourselves with the other person. And things often begin superficially, but a true and lasting relationship will be built on sharing, maybe an interest, maybe as a work colleague. We might get to know that person socially as well, to build up a broader picture. We will not know everything about them and there will always remain that risk that they are not who we think they are. But when we talk about a long-term relationship or marriage, then we look for more, more than shared interests, to the ability to be able to trust fully, to know that through whatever life throws at us, we will be able to trust and we will have a much better idea of that person's strengths and weaknesses, so much more about their background. And each time we meet after an absence, 
there will be pleasure there in our greeting. There will probably be delight. As Christians, we enter a relationship with Christ. It is a relationship that we long to share with others. And like any relationship, it takes time to build understanding and trust. Times of talking, of sharing, of asking, and yes, on occasions, there will be times when th we find things difficult, when our prayers go unanswered, and we may feel distant from him. And it's then that we might question just who Jesus is. Every so often though, and it often happens when we join together in worship, we feel the delight of his presence with us. And that's something we can't always put into words and something we've missed just lately very much. So how do the readings this morning help us to know Jesus better or widen our understanding of just who he is? Well, we're moving today out of the season of Epiphany into the two Sundays that precede Ash Wednesday, when we begin to observe the 40 days of Lent. Our own Christian year provides this time of preparation for the Holy Days of Easter in the same way that the Jewish month of Elul precedes their own Holy Days. And this week, this Sunday, and next, are a sort of bridge between Epiphany and Lent. Our readings throughout Epiphany showed us Jesus as he emerged from his childhood. This week, and next week, when we hear about the Transfiguration, the readings try to help us to glimpse to wonder at him in his fullness. It is as if the creators of the lectionary wanted to say to us, do you realise just who he is? Now these days, when we want to know about ourselves, we might look at science and genealogy. The Human Genome Project has provided so much information and will go on doing so in pursuit of vaccines and treatments for the illnesses that affect us. But more than that though, a DNA test does not just identify who you are, but can tell you a lot about where you came from and your parental history, and you can use genealogy to fill in the rest. This morning's readings are not exactly a DNA test, but in their way, they are attempts to describe the mystery of Jesus. And as I said earlier, when we enter a relationship, we want to know more. And believers have always sought to know more, more about his relationship with God the Father, more about his gift of the Holy Spirit. So just as we might use our DNA at to go back in time, the reading from Proverbs in the Old Testament tells us about the Holy Spirit, God's power. It's described as wisdom. It's the agency, says Proverbs, of creation. There, right at the start, involved in the business of creation. But more than that, the reading tells us of the delight of God, delighting in the created world, delighting as a parent in a newborn child or a grandfather in a grandchild. And then St John, in that resonant passage from the opening of his poetic gospel, talks about the Word of God. There again, at the beginning, the creative force 
but now coming to live among us full of grace and truth in the person of Jesus. Coming face to face, calling us, teaching us, healing us, and in the end, dying for us. Calling the most unlikely people to follow him, fishermen, tax collectors, and women, and even those who persecuted his followers, like St. Paul, whose wonderful description of Jesus we heard in the reading from his letter to the Colossians, teaching us then about his father, who delights in finding the lost coin, the lost sheep, and delights at the return of the prodigal son, teaching us about the joy, the delight in heaven over one sinner that repents. Then healing, not just physical ailments, but setting people free from that which binds them, fulfilling Isaiah in the delight of the lame leaping for joy, the joy of the unforgiven Peter, weighed down by his denials, but splashing through the water on his way to a breakfast being cooked by the risen Lord. Then the alternate healing on the cross at the end, defeating that which we must all face and bringing about the release of the Holy Spirit into our lives. That wisdom from Proverbs, that word of St John's Gospel, which brings us delight. I urge you to read the reading from Colossians over again, slowly and prayerfully, and receive at the end that reconciliation, that forgiveness, that peace for yourself. Just now, we are living very restricted lives. We are surrounded by sadness and levels of loss that many of us never expected to see in our lifetimes. And we ask, how long, how long before we are released? Our earthly concept of delight seems very far away. But we as Christians carry with us day by day the light, the delight. Our own delight at being set free from our sinful natures and the delight that comes from knowing that God delights in us. When we carry that light, that delight, aloft into our daily lives, we can bring hope to others. And in doing that, we become the hands and feet of the risen Lord. Then I was beside him like a master worker, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and delighting in the human race. Amen. Thank you for your word, Chris. As I was listening, I thought of the words of this song, Oh, the wonder of his grace.
and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Heavenly Father, we come to you at this dark and difficult time for us all. We pray for all those in our health and care services as they struggle to meet the physical, mental and emotional needs of those in their care. Equally important are our spiritual needs as well. And we pray for the work of your church in giving support, comfort and hope to all who call upon your name in their distress here in our parish, our diocese, our nation, and across the world. Within our own community, we pray for Sue, Marion, David, and Chris, as they meet the challenges and opportunities they now face. Uphold them encourage them and sustain them as they work to bring your love and care to all who need it and all of us who share with them in the task you have given them to do lord in your mercy hear our prayer lord god we are living in a world which is facing many changes at the moment, when many of the certainties we took for granted are no longer there, and we may wonder where events are leading us. Yet, Lord, help us to remember it is still your world, and you are still there for us and with us. And so, Lord, we pray for our leaders, who must make the crucial decisions about our health, our safety, and the economy upon which so many livelihoods depend. Even as we face our own problems, let us not forget those parts of the world which still have less resources than we do. And we remember in our prayers those aid agencies and organizations, a number of which we support, who are continuing in their vital work, without which so many lives would be much poorer than they are already. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in our community who are finding it hard to cope in the present situation because of their particular circumstances. And especially for school children whose lessons and social contacts have been disrupted. For teachers and parents trying to fill in the gaps, particularly where important exams are due. Lord, help them to find ways of continuing that important process of learning and that our children will not feel disadvantaged by circumstances beyond their control. May wise decisions be made about any return to school later on. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Even though we are much preoccupied with the effects of this pandemic, we still remember in our prayers those who are suffering from other illnesses and conditions at this time, and especially those we have been asked to pray for. Lord, we know there are names on our prayer tree, and as we bring them to you, we also bring the care and concern of those who place them there, and give thanks for their faith that you know each one so personally. We also pray, Lord, for Janet, Ellen, Janet, Evelyn and Ted, Roger and Mary, Janice, Betty, 
Nefat, Peter and Anne, Thomas, Mark, O God of love and power, we come to you for all who are ill in body or mind, and all who are cast down and sad. In the midst of all their pain and anxiety, may they feel the real presence of your love. Lord, take our prayers and use them. Turn our caring into their courage, our compassion into their comfort, and our faith into their healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for all who have lost loved ones at this time, and whose sorrow is deepened by the fact that they could not say farewell as they would have wished, or even at all. Especially we pray for the family and the friends of Ron Lewis, Doreen Chaplin, Barry Cook, John Margerson, Ivan Clark, Henrietta Hesketh, Jamie Slade, Raymond Parrish, Terry Powell, Father Eric C.R., Mary Wakefield. We also remember Captain Sir Tom Moore and his family. He was a truly remarkable individual. O God of love and power, hold them only as you can in that love which spans the gap between life and death. That the victory your Son won for us over death is there for us all. In that promise lies the hope of our salvation to eternal life in your heavenly kingdom. When all shall be reunited again, in that same love. Lord, in your mercy, hear mm -hmm. our prayer. Heavenly Father, as we begin a new year, we give you thanks for the work of our doctors, scientists and volunteers in bringing us hope for a better future and the gift and talents you have given them for our benefit. Even as events continue to unfold, give us the courage to trust in your guiding hand that in your unfailing love, you will lead us through to a safer and more secure future. Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As I prepare the table, I pray for you, our online community, and for our church, as we continue to work within the guidelines to offer worship from this place of prayer.
if you have become a regular with us online and want to know more about St Andrews or about God's Kingdom, please do get in touch and thank you for your continued support of St Andrews. It's been tough for so many this year, which makes me even more grateful. May God bless the gifts we offer and may you know God's blessing on you today. Pour upon the poverty of our love and the weakness of our praise, the transforming fire of your presence. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this sacrifice, which is both mine and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his church. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is our great High Priest who has loosed us from our sins and has made us to be a royal priesthood for you, our God and Father. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Jesus Christ to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, as we humbly pray and grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we receiving these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, in remembrance of the precious death and passion, the mighty resurrection and glorious ascension of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, we offer you through him this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Grant that by his merits and death, and through faith in his blood, that we and all your church may receive forgiveness of our sins and all of the benefits of his passion. Although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer you any sacrifice, yet we pray that you will accept this, the duty and service that we owe. Do not weigh our merits, but pardon our offences and fill us all who share in this holy and spiritual communion with your grace and heavenly blessing. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. We may not be able to meet together in person, but we can pray together. And from wherever we are, we receive Christ spiritually. Let us pray. Heavenly Heavenly Father, Father, as we we participate with your people in these holy mysteries, we we pray pray you now to grant your gift of spiritual communion with trust in your faithfulness and and your your abiding love Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. We do not presume to to come come to this your your table, table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. 
Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. of life was set in the heart of the earthly paradise and the bread of life at the heart of your church. May we, who have been nourished at your table on earth, be transformed by the glory of the Saviour's cross and enjoy the delights of eternity through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen, amen. and Amen. Thank you for joining in this service it wouldn't be the same without you. Our final hymn, chosen by Jim. There's more Jim's hymns in the weeks to come. This one starts slow, then builds and builds. It's a great sing, Jim. And now a blessing. May God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the source of all goodness and growth, pour his blessing upon all things created and upon you, his children, that you may use his gifts to the glory and welfare of all peoples and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you, those you love and those who love you, wherever they may be, today and until Jesus comes or calls. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us bless the Lord.
Thanks be to God. May the souls of the faithful departed rest in peace and rise in glory. The service is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. It shall go well.